Hello everyone and welcome back. So in the previous episode, we learned foundational techniques that form the DI, constructor, property, and method injection. We also covered some use cases with examples and when to use uh, each of them. So today we'll actually start covering one of my favorite subtopics in DI, and this is anti-patterns. So before we dive into the topic itself, let's discuss what anti-pattern is. So we all know that pattern is a solution to a commonly occurring problem that leads to great results. However, anti-pattern seems to work well and seems to be a solution to a problem. However, it leads to negative consequences instead of delivering great results. So today we will actually learn what is a control freak anti-pattern and we will get down to the naming in a minute. So um, let's start with an example. We have a very simple example, view controller again. <laughs> and then it has a strong reference to the NS managed object contacts, which comes from core data and it creates a persistent store container uh, from the name DI, which is defined in a bundle. And then it loads the persistent stores, it grabs the background context, and then a view to load it creates a test object in the context, sets the ID, performs a save operation to see whether it's saved successfully or failed. If I run the app, it will actually save data successfully because we're not doing any crazy operations with core data here. However, um, we might actually make the loading of persistent store fail. So uh, let's let's try to do it. We can create a uh, we can grab a URL from file manager for admin application directory and system domain mask and let's get the first URL and whenever we create the container we can create a description which is NS NS persistent store description with the given URL so whenever we set the URL on a description and we provide a description to the container it would actually save to the provider URL save or read from the provider URL and if I try, try to run the app this time it'll actually crash and let's see the crash log shortly. The problem is that the store coordinator can't open the store because we don't ha we have no permission to it. And this is actually a problem whenever you use some stateful frameworks like core data. So core data is actually a volatile framework, like a volatile dependency because it does some discrete up read writes, which in turn might fail. So by fail, I mean that the result is never deterministic. So um, if you if your component uh, can't, um, how to put it, rely on some object to produce the same result over and over again, let's say thousand times, billion times, you invoke the same method and get the same result. This is actually a volatile dependency and you better not create it because then everything would be very risky because saving performing uh, an operation in a context and try to save it might actually lead to an error after, let's say, a billion times of saving. So if I revert the change back and make sure that everything worked correctly, so everything is working pretty fine, let's actually start discussing what is a control frequency pattern. The problem is that since we are creating the container from the, uh, let's see, since we are creating a context from a container, we know from which model to create the container and what kind of context to get. Perhaps it might not be interesting to us to which context we are saving because like we are in a main queue, like it's someone else's job to dispatch it to a background queue or like do it on a main queue asynchronously or whatever. So um, the problem that we are creating the context and trying to save it actually leads to a problem of a control freak because we are controlling which context to create and what kind of container to um, to create and then from which container to get our context basically. So as you all know, instead of depending on concrete types, we were depend on abstractions. And since we're just saving uh, UUID, let's actually create the same interface, let's say. And the name would be persistence manager. And the only method that we need is to save the ID. So um, then we can create a core data manager, let's say, that would actually conform persistence manager protocol. 
and let's actually move almost entirely the code to the core data manager and move down this one into a save method so instead of mutating the uid we would just get the id which is injected from the method and instead of holding a reference to the context we better hold a reference to the persistence manager which is a protocol or an abstraction in between and then we can create manager like a core data manager right and then in a muted load we would call save and then provide some any uid this is great we've um, eliminated a lot of code in view controller it's much simpler however have we actually solved the problem of course not because we are creating core data manager still we are still creating core data manager which is a volatile dependency and depending on how it's initialized it might actually fail if it had some properties that need need to be injected into initializer we would also get we would also need to inject all the dependencies into the core data manager so let me demonstrate it so let's say we can load um container from any um data model let's say we can inject a data model name so that we can load a persistence container so if we try to inject to um core data manager then we actually have to get data model during initialization of the view controller or provided ourselves which actually tr creates more tight coupling so instead of let's say providing providing one we can ask from whoever creates the view controller to pass in the right model name and then let's inject di try to run the app and see that everything works fine of course everything is working fine however the problem right now is that view controller just needs the data model name so that it can pass data model name to the core data manager so dependency creating its own dependency. So the easy solution here is that instead of creating the core data manager so that we can pass in data model name to it, we better just accept some persistence manager as we've seen in the previous videos. And let's hold on to the persistence manager. And the only thing that got broken is the scene delegate. If I run the app again, it works just fine. And it's much simpler because we don't have to get some extra parameters so that we can just pass those parameters to the core data manager, which we'll is ask someone to get the instance of persistence manager and that's it. If I revert it back, so the problem with this approach as well is that we are controlling its lifetime. So core data manager would live as long as the view controller is in memory. However, what if we wanted to keep it for a bit longer? Let's say whenever the view controller gets deallocated, we want to make sure that some extra data or some important data is being persistent to the, to the let's say, local storage. We can't do that because it would actually get denitted with the view controller if we are creating it directly, as, as I'm showing here on line 48. And since we know which concrete type to create, and we are controlling its lifetime. The name implies that it's a control frequency pattern. So you better avoid it because it's very dangerous. It couples your class with whatever class it creates and it couples with all of the dependencies the other class has, as we've seen earlier. If the core data manager has a data model name, we also have to accept data model name so that we can just pass the string to the core data manager. So instead of doing that, we basically should accept that someone conforms to the protocol that we need and if you have a protocol in place but you create a concrete type you are you are doing almost nothing because um you are not exploiting the use of protocol oriented programming or like interfaces or like this list of substitution principle so never create dependencies inside dependencies or like components should never create their own components this is the rule so if you are not following that rule this actually leads to a 
control frequency pattern. And as a bonus, using initializer injection leads to testability. So if I remove it back and just inject data model name to be di, it's very hard for me to test this class. And let me let me demonstrate it. So let me revert it back. In the tests, we can create a simple test. Let's say SCT is our view controller, and the SCT is a system under test. It says since view controller is a subclass of UI view controller, we can uh, call view to load. And as you can see, it loads the view controller's view if it's not loaded yet. And then we have to assert that something has happened. However, how can we assert that something has happened if we can't inject anything to it? So let's make it testable by injecting the persistence manager again, instead of creating a core data manager. And if I go back, try to build the test target to actually complain that it can't create it because it requires a manager. Let me create a persistence manager spy which conforms the same protocol. And then whenever we, whenever the safe method is invoked, let's say we want to assert that we've actually called the safe method once during view to load. And we have to actually pass in the spy to our system under test. Persistence Manager spy and then pass in the spy. So before the view to load, we actually have to assert that call count was zero. And then after we invoke the view to load, it has to be one. So this is actually kind of a precondition. If I, if I go back to the test target, test should pass because the view controller actually calls safe on view to load. And yeah, it's passing. If I go to the view controller itself, and comment out line 59, try to run my test again, it would fail because whenever view to load occurs, we're not calling safe method on a persistence, persistence manager. And we've discussed today what is a volatile dependency, however, there is, it's an opposite term for volatile dependency, which is a stable dependency. And we have other view controller, which has a reference to the view model, and then it gets the view model by initializer and it calls load items during view to load. So the view model class just has the single method with the completion block. And whenever it's called, it would always return as zero, one, two, zero, one, and two. So the reason for view model to be a volatile dependency is because it would always return you the same values if you run the code over and over again. If you run this code like billion times, it would basically um, result with the same uh, output all the time because it doesn't depend on any disk read writes or it doesn't depend on network connection or some unstable stuff that might be in your app. So this is actually a stable dependency. We could actually go and create the view model this way. However, um, for testability reasons and for re reusability reasons, it was always better to get your components or your properties to be injected. And the advice is to always use constructor injection wherever possible. You cannot overshoot or undershoot with it. So today we've learned what is a control freak anti-pattern. We've we also learned what is anti-pattern in general. And we discussed some negative consequences of using control freak anti-pattern, which is tight coupling, no testability, no reusability, um, volatile dependencies being created in between, which leads to uh, unstable code, threading um, failures, because like you're trying to save something to the context or whatever. And we also discussed what is a stable dependency, which always leads to a um, deterministic result. So knowing the difference between volatile and stable dependency is very crucial. And we would build our knowledge upon that in the future videos as well. So um, do not resort to control freak 
uh, these were the examples of how not to use. And as you can see, the solution to this problem is very easy. Basically use initializer injection and ask whoever creates the view controller to provide the instance of uh, the persistence manager so that we not, do not control what kind of concrete type we create and we do not control its lifetime as well as we've seen uh, in the example. So this would be it for this video and stay tuned for the next video on service locator anti-pattern. Thanks a lot for watching.